So, um, as pointed out by the chairman, uh, my talk is now about uh, yeah, fuel risks and uh, looking at the list of the presentation, most is related to coastline, this erosion of cliffs and so on. And uh, so, therefore, this talk will be a little bit uh, slightly different. And the other thing is, uh, I'm not an archaeologist, I'm not expert in heritage protection, I'm a Google geomorphologist. So, this my uh, background in this is it's different. Um, I would like to talk about two different sites uh, the Alpine uh, uh, basin and Alpine basins in Switzerland, and that is it's here in South and South Spain. So, the first thing uh, that we have to um, Think about is what is the problem. The problem is in fuel retention of the same or the same thing as on your coastline. Uh, we assume that our heritage sites are uh, vulnerable to the effects of climate change on floods. Um, this is the idea behind that. But I can say you uh, also from our research, from our networks and pages, are working on paleo floods. Uh, it's not so easy uh, uh, to see the, 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 the influence of climate change because there are very large important. Uh, and uncertainties. And uh, one of the uncertainties is, for example, if your area, areas in catchments which are unwatched uh, catchments, you don't have uh, instrumental data or historical data, like the low prize, or that's 1,000 years of historical data, it's fantastic. But if you don't there in this uh, catchments, then you have to look for other records, or your report is very short. Um, this is important because you need to get an idea about uh, the large. Uh, uh, catastrophic event, events. And these events are not normally not high frequency events, but low frequency events. So, therefore, you can imagine you probably, if you get the largest events once in 100 years and once in 200 years, so uh, with the instrumental data you don't get it in most of the places. And the other thing is um, that uh, catchment, Google catchment, as coastline as well. Uh, so, um, the um, processes are on one hand, you have the Control factors is very complex, uh, a lot of variables uh, which are included there. On the other hand, there's a process and then the sensitivity of the catchment. So, this is a response, a fluid response. So, this is another problem. And uh, what I want to show is um, only some example. Uh, I can't resolve every problem, of course not, but I'll give you some, some examples uh, from methodology. That's an object to point of view about how to use integrated payer fund research. So, the first thing we go to our Switzerland here. Uh, we are the northeast of uh, the Alps. You see this, this is the catchment, uh, the headwater of the catchment, Aro River, 4,200 meters high. This is uh, Husky Aro Valley, and you see all the flooding. And this is after the flooding, it's not during the flooding. You can imagine the impact there. And you can imagine in uh, mountain areas, you have very few space for settlements. And most of the settlements, you can do this very nicely. You can see it. this are the data from the archaeological survey of Phantom uh, Bern. All the sites are mostly uh, uh, located uh, on the belly button, in the, which is uh, prone to, to floods. That we get the, the problem of flooding there um, since the Neolithic and the Roman Age and so on. And then we go on the, on the other side. These are all the dots here are historical buildings, historical buildings since the 14th century. This is a very valuable uh, wooden constructions. And to see again, they, these buildings are not flat there. So therefore, we have a, a, a quite a big problem, and of course, in all the, if you see this here, the great shadow, the uh, reason, the present uh, settlement pattern is the same. The people live in the flat. So you see this. This could be a fact. This is the Regina River, or it's probably in bank over there. But then it overtops the floods in the 2005 event, and it goes stride through the village of Wildersville, this is historical houses, uh, you have the damage by flooding on one hand on the houses, and on the other hand you have aggregation processes. It's not a fact that it's not only flooding, it's also aggregation, not only erosion, it's aggregation also a problem. You will see this. Um, then the first question we have to, to think about, what is the flood dynamics? What are the, the events, how they are distributed? This is a 2005 flood event. Uh, when it occurred, the press said, okay, this is a one, one event in, in 500 years is was a very large event. But if you go uh, looking on historical data on the same catchment, then you see, oh, we have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, we have five events in 500 years. So it's a recurrent period of 100 years. Um, 
The other thing, and we are lucky to have this data, if you go only on the instrumental data, then of course it's the largest event of, 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 um, um, during the last 108 years. So therefore, uh, instrumental data, the way of paper calibrating and the historical data is quite good. Uh, to see uh, the last uh, important climate shift, let's say it like this. But if you go back, want to go back and you really want to understand climate, then you have to go, have to uh, make research based on natural archives. We use sediment, you can do also use dendro chronology, you can use uh, dendro morphology, uh, lichens, and so on. That we do a uh, multi proxy approach, and this is a proxy that you get in this uh, direction of floods. Uh, this is a uh, quite long. Uh, uh, series I will show this uh, more detail in the next slide. Uh, of course, we integrate all the historical data that we got uh, from the area, all the instrumental data. We want to, to understand also what was the magnitudes of the, of the flat. It's quite tricky uh, regarding the past. Uh, but this is that's not the problem. It's quite good. It works quite good. And uh, then we make correlations with other catchments and uh, we, understand, uh, we try to also form the climate, uh, climatological point of view we want to understand the events. So, this is probably, uh, I don't go into this detail, it's only to show with this curve here, this one, this blue one, and this blue one, and this are flood proxies from the uh, geochemical properties of the sediment we got from the flood plains. The only what you have to think about, worry about, is in this direction you get floods, uh, in this direction you get, you get more soil formation or less uh, flood activity, and you see the curve is going down, going up, and so on. I shaded this uh, with, uh, in blue colors, uh, the flux period, which is a cluster of flux, which uh, occurs during cooler climate pulses, and in yellowish uh, color, the flux pulses during warmer climate pulses, and you see we have really the problem here with cooler climate. Uh, they can make the same thing uh, with uh, the longer uh, time, Period. Now we have 2,000, yeah, let's say 2,600 years. Uh, this is again our curve, and the same, it's more or less the same picture as the dominant of, of the cooler climate. Uh, this is uh, data that also be uh, correlated with the lake uh, uh, records. Uh, the Swiss are very active in this, and uh, we came to the same uh, result. We have uh, the periodicity, we have solar cycles, uh, the Zeus cycle, the Geisberg cycle, and we have the 105 year cycle as well. Uh, so therefore, we have uh, a global signal there, what we think. And uh, yeah, this is, I, I think it's basic to understand the dynamics in the area. So you see again the flood here uh, after the flood. So let's say it, and it is, it is flooding here. The whole it can flood the whole valley bottom. So this is quite uh, dangerous. And on the other hand, it's very difficult to settle there. And it's not only because of the water; it's also because the channels are shifting. And they're shifting with the reconstruction of the last 600 years. And uh, you see all the different colors, and those are the challenges in this area. So, therefore, it's very difficult to, uh, to settle there, and all the villages which were constructed in the bloodland disappeared during the last uh, 500, 600 years. And the people settled on this higher elevation ground here, these are the illusion fans. But you get other problems, of course. Now, this is a fan data. Um, a little bit more great, uh, and therefore the people <coughs> are, uh, are settling there. You see this uh, marked in the yellowish one, uh, uh, the most important settlements, historical settlements. Uh, then you see the dots, these are historical houses over there. Then you have the archaeological finding of this here, and the castle over there, and so on. And these are fluid structures. This is uh, fluid morphology, uh, mapping all the structures, and then reconstructing, uh, taking this. Uh, uh, the forms and coring, uh, did a lot of coring in these areas, so that, and dating the sediments, then you get an idea about what was the dynamic, and you see these are the different uh, uh, channels uh, before the embankment uh, during the last, let's say, uh, 200 successful embankments during the last 200 years. Let's have a look on the settlement patterns there. Uh, the same map, and you see it, this is the floodplain from the Lucina today, this is from the past. And this is a, a little fan that you get debris flows, can get debris flows, must get uh, uh, affected by debris flows. And if you divide the houses, the historical houses, since uh, this, in this case, well, since the 15th century, uh, if you divide it into cooler and warmer climate phases, um, here is the solar activity. I compared this because we know the solar cycles in 
the influence of the solar cycle on the flood dynamic, then you see that on mostly uh, all the houses which were constructed in the flood plain uh, over here are constructed during warm climate. So there the people knew quite well what they did uh, during history and during cooler climate they were settling more on the higher ground. So these are some of these nice historical houses. People live there, they use this, and you can see another effect there, I think. So this is the distance here between the wooden structure and the ground. So therefore, you can imagine the difference height is the result of flooding and aggregation. Because the people, uh, the, the people of the villages and the houses are affected by aggregation, so elder houses have now staircases going down. And you can, if you look at a lot of uh, houses like this, due to measurement, then you can reconstruct here all the land, or the, the older land uh, surface, and so on. Geomorphological is very interesting. The other thing is why they are different here, because in 1529 there was a large flood. So therefore, these house groups were constructed before this, uh, 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 after the large event. So this is the difference here. Okay, this I don't want to go in. This is very complicated, but it's really interesting to, to use this data in this story well. So, class reconstruction. But this uh, solution here, the Swiss are quite clever. What they did is, you uh, can see that how many people live this in this, in this area. So, what they did is, on one hand, uh, the improvement of the banks and then of uh, the dredge, dredging of the channels, uh, controlled flooding. This, is this, this area here, this comes the river to the actual river, is this one, and this is the flooding area of the airport industrial uh, area and so on, and bypass. So these are the tragedies here, uh, cost around, around uh, 31 million uh, uh, francs. So the other thing, if, uh, if you're thinking about settlement on uh, uh, Louvre uh, fans and cones, so the, the story is quite different. Uh, you can see this here. This is a cone of the Eisenbach. Uh, here is some, the only the historical houses of the, of the village who survived of that area. And you can imagine uh, they are steeper, a little fans, and the processors are, have much more energy. And this is very, very dangerous to get blocks of, let's say, 100 tons coming rushing down with 50 kilometers an hour. So this is uh, the problem of this uh, torrential uh, 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 creeks in the Alps. And uh, what you can see, they are on the opposite side of the today's channel. And this is, you can see this in many, many villages in Switzerland, that the people there is a, a, a detour, a natural detour of the, of, the, um, of the channel, and the people went to the other side and to the most distal, more, most distal area of the little fan. Uh, and reconstructed from geomorph geomorphology, then law and uh, historical data, you see you can reconstruct this shift of uh, the channel to this side. Well, this is uh, the measurement here, of course, around uh, to 3 million uh, uh, francs. Um, in, improve the magnets again. Uh, uh, this is not the first uh, the new idea. You see this on the ground. There are all the embankments from the 19th century, but now they make it big. Probably for the landscape, it's we can criticize it properly, but it's really a, measure, a good measurement which feels safe in this area. But you have to maintain it. Why? This are data now from Corey from a uh, distal basin, which is over here, here, over there. This is a little fan, and we are very lucky. To get the sediments, and we can reconstruct the dynamic of the code for about 3,800 years. And we can reconstruct how the shallow shifts of a rule fan. And this is a natural behavior. So, therefore, uh, now we are at this state. Um, in the future, you have to maintain the system, you have to drag all the material out, you get it out. A lot of sediments during decades, uh, but they have to move in the future. That's the only way, I think. So, and uh, the effect of aggravation uh, becomes also very clear. If you have this nice this, uh, church of Michels, uh, of Meiringen, uh, you see the different colors, and this is the ages here. You see, as aggravation affected also some villages, also the church here, and how the church, the new church, were constructed on the old church, and the floor is rising up. Huh? This is exactly what uh, the same as we saw with the other uh, uh, wooden buildings. Yeah? Uh, this is a spectacular building. The other thing is, what about climate change and what are the dynamics, uh, flood increased or not? This is the question. And to answer the question, understand that the dynamics of, uh, of, the cl of climate, what we do is on one hand, paleo climate modeling, and on the other hand, uh, we are looking here uh, uh, by multivariable analysis of the uh, sea surface pressure uh, from the 20th century reanalysis project. We re uh, re reconstruct which is the type of, uh, of pattern. Atmospheric pattern get during this, this uh, uh, large events, 
and we have the summer north Atlantic oscillation and the positive phase, and we get more from the from Mediterranean, uh, the warmer, the moist air, or you get it in the negative uh, mode, you get it from the Atlantic. The second area is southeastern Spain. And you can see this, uh, this rumbler here, this torrent. And how do you, what do you get? How high goes the water here? It goes up to here, to this level. And there you see some milk there. And the water in 2000, 2012, run over this terrace here, over the rock terrace. So it is really large difference right, to see the river in one field or the other. So you reconstructed this with, lich uh, with lichens and all the algaes. Uh, on the rock, uh, on the rock walls, uh, in the uh, 1973, the level, uh, flood level, were quite high. So these are the first uh, the catchments: uh, Amatora catchment, uh, Antas and Aguas, uh, that we studied there. Um, and now the question was again: climate. What is the relation climate to floods? So this is a temperature we reconstructed from the different uh, climatological, uh, meteorological stations uh, about the last uh, 160 years. And these are this different colors here are the flood index indices uh, from, the, uh, from the damage which occurred during the floods. And uh, you see that they are clustered. There are clusters and large peaks. So this is the first cluster here um, uh, uh, before 1900. Then you get uh, another blue cluster around the 70s. And you see these are more related to cooler climate phases again, whereas the smaller, the secondary, uh, uh, floods here are more related to warmer climate pulses. Of course, the precipitation uh, is also important. We don't have the data, unfortunately, in southeast Spain, uh, but you see this is also correlates with higher annual precipitation and so on. And this happens also during the last event. So, um, what about the, 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 uh, the interesting thing because of the magnitude of the floods, the flash floods running through the Mediterranean? Uh, people know that already, and, and the people settled on higher places, on terraces and surfaces, the Trapatinia, for example, you have a calcolytic site. So if you map it carefully, geomorphological, psychographic, with water, you the soils and the fluid terraces, then you get a good idea if you're safe or not. Of course, there are other sites which are in the middle. You don't know if the, if the flood will reach this or not. There's Kadimars and Roman ruins there. It's over there, and you're not sure if the flux can reach this level. And then if you do some stratigraphy, petty soil uh, research and so on, the deer found out here is uh, from the last deluxe 6,000 years, flood didn't reach uh, these levels of the, uh, of the uh, Roman uh, reeds over there. So this is another mythological approach. Uh, however, there's, there's something interesting that we observe. Um, there are a lot of hydrological structures there. Um, there are historical structures, wonderful archetypes and so on. Uh, from the last yeah, hundreds of years, but also from the last 120, 130 years, and so it's interesting they were constructed during the flood cluster here. And then they say, okay, they survived this. Why did they fail uh, not during the 73 event, which was much larger? You can see this by the vegetation there. Why did they fail in 2012? And the answer of this, okay, is it's not the maintenance of the structure. And the other thing is that, the, uh, 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 that all the structure uh, uh, got obstruction by body and organic debris. This is another thing. This is related to the management of riverbeds and also of land use. And this land use changes are dramatic there. This is, uh, I, I skipped this, it's only to say that uh, you see the land, land change changes here from 56, the irrigation, I mapped since 93, and 2016 it goes uh, away from traditional dry farming irrigation to triggered irrigation and large crop farming. You get, this causes a lot of runoff and a lot of erosion. Yeah. So, and uh, this are the uh, that is uh, the result of this. Uh, uh, they have the tourism here, the coastline, and they are affected by the floods because they constructed in the floodplain. Of course, yeah, this is uh, the 2012 one. But I ha we have the idea uh, that this could be really that there's something going wrong there. And um, uh, it, it's not the climate thing, it's, it's the land use and the management, which is here in uh, the problem. Uh, in the future, uh, you see again here uh, there's a reconstruction of the, uh, of the climate pattern of this, uh, of this events. Uh, we are working on this. Uh, my colleague, uh, Juan Carlos Peña, is working on that. Uh, so we probably, hopefully, we can contribute the different uh, uh, types of patterns of cold drops or uh, fronts or uh, 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 blocking systems, how they are related to all the cooler climate uh, goods. So therefore, in conclusion, what I think uh, we need long, robust uh, climate uh, 
or flat series to understand the flat dynamic, the currents interval. Uh, this is basic, uh, this is fundamental to, to, to risk assessment of heritage sites. And uh, it is not only the climate change uh, uh, a factor which is important in this area that we work, it's also the land management, the flood management, uh, land use, and all the things what uh, I showed you. Uh, the local communities struggled always when, during centuries uh, with these problems, and they got their, the knowledge how to handle this. We saw that quite well. And the important thing is to learn from them that we don't. Uh, that we don't uh, uh, miss this knowledge, that we don't apply this knowledge, uh, knowledge uh, because of our uh, higher technology our level today, the passive mitigation is one of the best, uh, is, is the best uh, uh, strategy to avoid damage uh, to, uh, uh, or is it heritage size, or is it uh, housing. But well, thank you very much.